Welcome to our fourth and final video concerned with looking at representations of women in ancient Greece. Thus far, we have looked at some historical background, including what rights women had and how they are perceived in society. We looked at the Delphic oracles and a bit at proto-feminism and Plato. So you may be wondering, what next? I intend on concluding these topics and connecting back to my original goal, which is to engage philosophers and feminists alike in ancient Greek philosophy. If by now you aren't the least bit interested, allow me to do my best in this final installment by looking at some incredible women represented in Greek philosophy. Women were probably more active in Pythagoreanism than any other ancient philosophical movement. We know very little of the Pythagorean women philosophers of the 6th and 5th centuries BC, however in Pythagorean in Iamblichus on the Pythagorean life, the name of 17 Pythagorean women are given. This is still contrasted to the 218 male names, however, for a society that was so grounded in misogyny, this is something nonetheless. One philosopher we know a bit more about is Diatima of Matnia, who we have already discussed in our second video, as her role in Greek philosophy is quite significant. Though her existence is disputed, her impact on the Socratic dialogues is quite evident. Diatima is praised in the symposium, and despite her differing views from Plato, it appears she is highly respected. She is implied in the dialogues to be a priestess, so this is potentially why she is so revered. Her impact in philosophy can be directly traced to her role in the formation of Platonic love, which is characterized by a love that is not rooted in lust or bodily pleasure. It is far more abstract. Here is what Plato, or Socrates, in symposium has to say about her. A woman who was wise about many things besides this. Once, she even put off the plague for ten years by telling the Athenians what sacrifices to make. She is the one who taught me the art of love. As well, in ancient philosophy we see reference to another woman, Aspasia. Partner of the prominent statesman Pericles, we know Aspasia for her role in Plato's half-ironical diatribe on war. In the Socratic dialogue, Menexenus, we see Socrates give a speech he claims to have learned from Aspasia, and she is regarded as a prominent female Athenian intellectual. Sadly, these are the only two women we really see in the dialogues, which is in part why I wanted to highlight their roles, as the sparsity in, of women in Plato's work leaves some room to question, was he really revolutionary? I would still argue yes, however, it is strange for the conversation surrounding the rights of women to be conducted without the presence of women. In the discipline of feminist theory or social justice, it is a fact that conversations about women must involve women. How will Plato see the struggle of women, or the real limitations of women in education, or whatever it may be, without hearing from a woman directly? Socrates is known for his saying, the only true wisdom is knowing that you know nothing. However, Plato presents it as if Socrates knows everything about the experience of women and doesn't use the opportunity to instead ask a woman or include a woman in the conversation in order to teach the philosophers. This takes us to the end of our mini-series, but I hope I was able to engage you in our exploration of how women were treated and represented in ancient Greece, philosophy, and particularly in the dialogues. My hope is that by looking at some of the historical context, matriarchy and Greek religion, women in ancient Greek philosophy, and finally representations of women, perhaps it opened to your eye to how women were treated and thought about. I leave you with some questions. What do you think it would have been like to be a woman trying to study philosophy in ancient Greece? What do you think that women who read or heard of what Socrates said about women thought at the time? Do you think Plato was revolutionary in his ideas? I hope you enjoyed the mini-series and will continue learning about antiquity and especially Greek philosophy outside, as this series has barely scratched the surface. I'm interested in hearing your thoughts and I thank you for listening.